Steve Jew and MMA Mania. All right, Andy, you're on the phone with Steve from MMA Mania. Hey, Andy, it's Steve Jew. Not much. We've talked before. I had you on Glove Up or Shut Up a couple of years ago. How you been? Oh, yeah. What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. And back then, you were still on Bellator Fightmasters, so there were a lot of things you could and couldn't say because they were spoilers for the show. But now that it's been a little bit, how, yeah. do, you, how do you feel about that experience a couple of years later? It, it was a good experience. Uh, I'm not sure if I would do it again or not, but other than that, it was it was good learning experience and definitely um, figure out a lot about myself during that that time for Fightmaster, you know, my abilities and what I can push through. One of the best aspects of it was all the legends you got to be around and work with, you know, Randy Couture, Joe Warren, you know, you just the experience you could tap into while you were there. Well, I didn't get a, a lot of that experience because I got cut in my fight that I won and, you know, I got sent home packing, so I didn't really get to train with them much. Um, the only time I got to talk to them was when, I went out there, had my stitches and everything, and they told me that I was suspended. So that was about it. But, yeah, it would have been a better experience if I could have stayed and did some training and learned something there. But other than that, it was all right. Since that time, career in Bellator, you've had a win and a loss. You've done some stuff outside of Bellator as well. In fact, your last win was over a Bellator veteran, Super Duper Bobby Cooper, back in March of last year. Yeah, Yeah, I fought him at Titan on two weeks' notice. He's a he's a good guy, good fighter, man. We had a good fight. So how'd that situation come about that you took the fight on such quick notice? Um, I was already in shape. I fought uh in I fought like February twentieth and I fought at one eighty five, so I didn't have to, you know, make two weight cuts back to back and uh I got called two weeks out for the cotton fight and they asked me, you know, I was eating a five guys cheeseburger and they asked me and I was like, yeah, man, I'll take the fight. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't too heavy yet still and I was still training and in shape. So, um, I actually got a call from one of the promoter, local promoters around here that was looking for a guy and they said, you're the guy. And I said, I'm the guy. Let's do it. And so, so I took it and it went, went real well. So the question is, if you got that call while you were eating five guys burgers and fries, did you finish the meal or did you stop right there? No, man, I, I smashed it. I was, <laughs> That was good, man. My metabolism is still pretty good. You know, I'm 30 years old, but I'm still, I'm still pretty good. I can still eat a little bit here and there and cheat sometimes. So, but yeah, I, I, I ate it, man. There's no way I'm going to let a five guys burger go. I know those things might be grease bombs, but damn, if they're not delicious, I can't put one down when I start eating. Yeah. Them. Yeah. They're <laughs> very good. Well, it's been almost a year now since the last time we saw you fight at Titan. So, uh, was taking two fights that close together just too much to handle, or did you need some time off for other things? No, um, I actually wanted to fight five times last year, and I had everything set up to fight five times. Uh, I fought February, and then I fought short notice in March. You know, I was I had another fight set up uh, at the end of May to fight again at 185, so I didn't have to make another weight cut, and it fell through. Uh, negotiations between the guy I was supposed to fight. He's one of the top guy around here in Mississippi. Um, so that fell through. And then I had another fight lined up July 3rd. And that fight went, was going good and training was going good. And come to the week of the fight, the guy I was supposed to fight, uh, backed out due to injury, due to he injured his back. And, you know, and it was, it was real sketchy, uh, him backing out that late because, He's been known to back out of fights a lot, and he actually called me out to fight. And I said, yeah, fine. You know, and I, I was supposed to fight uh, the guy I was supposed to fight in May at the end of July, and I took this fight, and they, you know, they said, well, we can't, you know, match you up at the end of July just in case if something happens to you in this fight. So that guy backed out from injury, and then I didn't get the end of the July fight, and uh, I had another fight scheduled in August, which got – taken out because the promotion had to cancel the show due to one of the promoters got a new job and had to go off the police academy. So wow. it just, it was, it was just one of the things so I've been consistently training this year, but I guess when I posted that I wanted to fight five times that God had different plans for me that year. <laughs> so I guess it might've been just to train and, and get ready for this. Cause I got this call in August. I think I got this call. I got called to fight in August, but it was for a short notice fight for Bellator. And then I, you know, once I got the call to fight Paul Daly, that's when, you know, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I held out and didn't fight five times for a reason now. So it worked out for the best. 
well, it certainly can't hurt to have that much preparation to face Paul Daly because he's known for hitting people very hard. So you want to be as ready as you can when you're facing him. Exactly. And it's got to be a relief, too, you know, after, like you said, so many fights falling apart and falling through, to finally have a fight and an opponent you know won't back out because it's the main event for Bellator 148. Yeah, man, I'm super stoked. You know, I feel like, you know, nine years in the making has brought me to this point in my career and uh I'm just you know doing everything I can to come out there and put on a show for Bellator, put on a show for my fans and you know let everybody know who Andy the Sunny York is and you know let Paul let, make Paul Daly earn, you know, earn my respect and and fame vice versa. I'll, he'll earn I'll earn his respect. Now, I know we talked about it on Glove Up or Shut Up, but I got a different audience at MMA Mania. They don't know the entire story. So tell people that are reading this and hearing this for the first time how you got that stunner nickname. Uh, my older brother gave it to me uh, as an amateur. I fought a few guys around here. They were top guys, top-level amateurs. You know, uh, One guy had been training for six years and was undefeated. Another guy was undefeated and was a brown belt and had been training for 10 years. You know, and a lot of guys were like, why are you fighting these guys so early in your career, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and, and I, the way I looked at it was, one, I wasn't getting paid to fight because I was fighting as an amateur. Two, if I lost, it wouldn't matter. And three, if these guys have been training so long, why aren't they pro? And, you know, and I, I was beating, you know, guys that I wasn't supposed to beat. And my brother was like, man, you're stunning these guys. You know, what, what do you name you the stunner? <laughs> so that's that's how I got the nickname. Yeah, well, there was some confusion, I think, with my co-host at the time, because he thought maybe you were a pro wrestling fan with the nickname The Stunner, because that's a famous pro wrestling move. Oh, yeah, from Stone Cold, yeah. Oh, I'm a pro, pro wrestling fan for sure. Hulk Hogan's one of my heroes. <laughs> Grew up watching, watching watching the Hulkster. I was a Hulkamaniac, big time. Ultimate Warrior, all those guys. That, I don't watch it much now because it's too soap opera-ish and... Just, just not into all the, all the show, show art of it. I'd rather watch the old wrestling back in the day. Macho Man and Ric Flair, those were my guys. Well, what's interesting is that when I've seen people criticize Bellator, there are people that are out there who are saying things like, man, Bellator's too theatrical. They need to be more sport. They need to be more like UFC. I'm like, you know what? It's nice to have a little bit of presentation and staging and lighting and super fights. I think that makes Bellator fun. Yeah, and it, and it makes Bellator different than the UFC. And, I, you know, a lot of people are not too amused with the UFC right now. They're putting out good fights and they're matching up good fights, but all the uh, making everything, you know, a sport and the Reebok deal, you know, they're getting a lot of backlash. And I feel like a lot of it's going to start coming from the fighters from within. And, you know, now fighters have opportunities and places – elsewhere to go fight and make you know make a name for themselves or keep their name going and make a decent amount of money you know you can fight for bellator and and one fc and stuff like that so you know it, it's always good to have competition at that high of a level with promotions because it makes them you know makes bellator have to do something different to outdo the ufc and vice versa so yeah the the bellator the bellator way is is pretty interesting i'll, I'll give them that i like it and Josh Thompson said this to me when I talked to him, is that the sponsorship money makes a big difference when you can wear what you want and not have to wear the Reebok uniform. And I'm sure for a lot of guys out there, that's a key difference between Bellator and UFC, and probably is in your case as well. Yeah, man. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have the sponsors that I have if I was fighting in the UFC. You know, maybe make more money, but it, it all goes back to the respect for the fighters and, you know, Fighters need a voice, and that's where, you know, the next thing that needs to happen and evolve in the sport is, you know, fighters getting a union to where they can have a voice and not just the promotions and all the big money people talking over the fighters. You know, we're the ones that come out and put in the work and and come out there and, and, and do the show, you know, but that's the way I feel. Well, speaking of putting in work, what is your game plan for putting in work against Paul Daly? What what kind of approach are you going to take to him when you step inside that Bellator cage? The same approach I take in, in my life. You know, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go to work and put in put in the work, you know, blue-collar work, have pride in my work, and uh, keep moving forward. You know, I'm going there, I'm going to push the pace, and 
make sure that he don't get his timing in to where he could start, you know, feeling comfortable and then throwing them big left hooks and the big, big straight rights and, and stuff like that, you know, where he can sit on the outside and counter me and, and hit me with those big bombs. You know, I got to stay in the space, stay good angles, make sure I'm moving real good. And, you know, I got to keep the pace turned up on him. Was there any advantage in a guy that's been around for so long and had so many kickboxing fights that there's so much video out there that you can watch the angles and the timing that he uses and maybe get a little edge on that? Uh, yeah, you can, um, which I, I haven't really done a lot. I've watched video here and there, but it's more along the lines of implementing your game plan and, and imposing your will. You know, he's going to have to do the same thing. He's going to have to come in and impose his will and make me fight his fight. And I'm gonna have, you know, and vice versa. I got to come in and make him fight my fight, you know. And if we all, if we know, if no, if no, fight each other out, then there's gonna be a an interesting fight right there. Does it add any extra pressure? Not just the fact that he's sort of got his reputation as a power puncher, but also that it's the featured fight on the card, or is it just another day at the office? Um, I mean, there's always gonna be pressure any fight that that I fight, there's going to be pressure because I don't want to go out there and lose or get embarrassed or anything like that. But also at the end of the day for this fight, I have nothing to lose. You know, I'm going in there with everybody saying I have no chance. So I'm going to go in there and shock the world and come out on top. And he's going to have a lot worse time after the fight than I am. If he loses, than if I would, if I would lose, you know what I'm saying? If he wins, there's not much, you know, he gets another win under his belt and he can, you know, talk his shit and try to get a title fight or get his rematch with Josh Koscheck. You know, if I beat him, I can come in and, and kind of reestablish myself in Bellator and, and up on the next level of Bellator than what I fought before. People said the exact same thing about Joe Schilling fighting Melvin Manoff and he knocked him out. So people should not just assume anything about any fight at any time. Exactly. And that's what I said, uh, a past interview, they asked me, you know, what do you say to the people that aren't giving you a, ch- a chance or a shot in this fight? You know, the only people that are supporting me are the people that are around me that believe I'm going to come out as, with a win is myself and my supporters. You know, what I tell those people that don't think I can win the fight is, like what you just said, look back in history of MMA in general. A lot of people that weren't supposed to win fights won those fights and shocked the world. So it's happened before, and it's about to happen again January 29th. Well, yeah, I mean, outside of Bellator 2 in recent history, we have just what happened with Holly Holm and Ronda Rousey. She was 8-1 to one underdog coming into that fight and shocked the world in that fight as well. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent, hidden talent out there, and it just has, you know, you, you just have to bring your talent out and show the world, and that's what I'm planning on doing January 29th. Well, you talked about the team around you that believes in you, but expand upon that a little bit. Tell everybody who you work with, who you train with, and how you get to be the guy that's going to stun the world on the 29th. Uh, my support system, you know, in my mind is, is one of the best. You know, I have a really supportive wife. You know, she works a full-time job and, and deals with, you know, my long nights when I work my full-time job and then I come home and I got about an hour of time to hang out and then I'm off to the gym for another three hours and I get back and eat dinner late and then, you know, it's back at it again the next day. Um, the guys at the gym, uh, I'm at a new gym. I've been here for three years now since my last loss at Bellator. And, you know, I've, I've got a lot more training partners to work with. I've got multiple coaches that I can go to to ask for advice instead of, you know, planning out my own training or training other guys. You know, I'm kind of, being able to focus on my fight career now, you know, because I used to run a gym and manage my own team and manage my own career and, you know, make sure all my guys were ready for their fights. Um, I've got great training partners to the likes of Teddy Holder, who has a main event fight at World Series of Fighting coming up next week, Zach Underwood, Jake Underwood, Joe Pass. I mean, I can name a whole bunch of guys and a lot of uh, local up-and-coming guys fighting pros coming up that I get a fight, uh, you know, I get a train with these young guys that, you know, they come into the gym and they look at me and they see where I'm at. They want to be there. So they're going to push me in the gym to try to get to where I'm at. And that just makes my training better. So, you know, coming from where I was at before, you know, I had a good little team to where I'm at now. You know, I, I have a lot more um, options in my new gym. 
and Teddy Holder is another one of those shock the world examples. I mean, who thought he was going to knock out Tiago Silva in two minutes and he did it? Yeah, nobody, nobody, nobody knows about the the Teddy Holder power, you know, and and I do, and me and Teddy have been training partners for going on seven years now, and he moved to Memphis to train with me, and I'm glad he did, you know. And he's uh he's he's one of those guys. He's fighting on the future champs. He's going to be a future champ. He fought for the world title back in November or September and you know he he had he had a bad showing you know but it's it's one of those things I think that fight's going to bring the best out of him and you'll see a different Teddy Holder come next weekend David Branch really didn't give us a chance to see anything out of him because he took him down and and submitted him so we never got to see that stand-up power so I'm sure I'm sure the next thing we'll see from him is probably improved takedown defense and and more options on the ground if it goes there you bet, man. He's he's in the gym working hard for sure. No doubt. Well, you are too, and that whole team is. So, you know, like you said, a lot of good guys. Teddy Holder, Zach Underwood, yourself. It seems like, you know, iron sharpens iron, as they say in MMA. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we got a good thing going here at Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu with all of us guys. And we've uh, brought the team together and all the coaches together, you know, making sure keeping everybody on top of their game and uh Make sure everybody does what they're supposed to do at the gym, training, helping each other out because 2016 is going to be a big year for us. And these next, these next couple of weeks are going to show it. We got a lot of guys on the World Series of Fighting card here in Memphis and then myself, uh, main eventing for Bellator at the end of the month. You know, it's, it's big news for Tennessee MMA for sure. Absolutely. Well, we plugged the gym and we plugged Memphis, but let's get out some other plugs as well. What else do you want to shout out before we start to wrap up this interview? I uh, definitely want to shout out my wife, Jessica, and all that she does to help me out and, and keep me, you know, motivated and everything done around, around the house and just to keep, keep everything kind of relaxing, I guess you should say. She keeps it to where my mind don't have to worry about anything but training and work and the fight. Um, Memphis Judo and Jiu Jitsu, definitely big shout out to them and David Ferguson, the owner, all my coaches, all my training partners. Uh, Vapor Five, my, one of my sponsors, uh, big shout out to them bringing me on for this fight and supporting me for this fight. Hayabusa, um, my company that I work for, White Carpentry, uh, all my guys there, they let me, you know, take, take the time off to travel out and, and do the fight and everything and get out for, uh, for training and all that stuff. My manager, Alan, and, Alan Cersei at MMA Monster Factory. He's, he's, uh, he's probably been the one behind the scenes doing all the work because I keep telling him, you know, just stay in their face, keep in, you know, keep it, keep my name in there in mind and the emails, email these guys, let them know, you know, I'm ready, good to fight, good to go, let them know. So he's been, you know, keeping the emails hitting these promoters and keeping my name in people's heads. Uh, big shout out to him. And, uh, other than that, man, it's, it's just time to go. Shout out to Bellator for giving me the opportunity and, and the, the chance to come back and show that I belong with Bellator. Oh, yeah, and I'll throw a shout out to Alan as well because he hit me up on Facebook before Bellator even hit me up about interviews for this card. So he was already working the hustle even before it got officially announced. Yeah, Alan's the hustler, man. I, that's what I like about him, too. He, he takes real good care of me, and and uh I couldn't ask for a better guy to, to manage me. You know, he's... He's a good friend, and I've known him for a while now, and he he definitely keeps keeps my name in people's heads. He is a good guy, and I've known him for quite a while too. I I first ran into him at a Strike Force show in St. Louis, and he's been cool to deal with ever since then. So much respect to him, much respect to you, and it's going to be a fantastic main event: the Stunner Andy Urick and Semtex Paul Daly on January 29th at the Save Mart Center in Fresno, California. Andy, thank you so much for the time today. Hey, guys, no problem. Thanks for having me on. You bet.